Welcome back to New Day Northwest. Let's go back to the beginning of 2021. June baby chef Eduardo Jordan is one of the biggest names in food in Seattle. But that all came to a halt in June of that year when the Seattle Times broke a story that several workers had accused him of sexual misconduct in the workplace. He has since apologized and it's been more than two years since we've had him on our show and we thought now was the right time to check in with him. Chef Eduardo Jordan joins us now. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. So what have the last two years been like? Oh, it's been a very interesting two years. Um, very transformative and very tough. Um, you know, there's been a lot of self growth, um, changes that I've made to myself, mm -hmm. for myself, for the business. Um, and I'm, I'm proud about the direction that we've going in. I think the last two years have also been like the stop button. It allowed us mm -hmm. to kind of reset, level set, and analyze our entire systems and programs to make sure that we're providing an environment that is safe, welcoming, and um, just there for our employees. Yeah, yeah, let's talk about that. What sort of work have you done on yourself to move forward from this? Well, there's been a lot of conversations mm -hmm. um, with coaches, therapists. Um, mental health is a big thing in the restaurant industry. We've mm -hmm. suffered through that. We've seen so many people go through so many um, mental health issues, and I can say I'm one, one of those too. You know, yeah. what I went through was hard. What I put, through, what I put people through was tough. Um, and so I just needed time for myself to, to, to one, have balance, self-growth, to think about, to listen, to get feedback, to get criticisms, to actually be able to make change. And that took time. Yeah. So the last two years have been great for the opportunity to level set and reset. And, and it's so important when we have that growth and we have that, like you said, that stop, reset, what's going on. The industry, industry-wide, the, there has been a long history of toxic restaurant culture. Uh, long hours, high stress, there's alcohol involved. I mean, this is, this is all across the board. Correct. How do you affect change in this industry? How do you really make those changes? Like you said, the, the stress, the depression, all mm -hmm. of it. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot to like dissect when you talk about the, the toxicity that is kind of cultivated in the mm -hmm. restaurant industry. We've talked about it for years. Mm -hmm. Anthony Bourdain talked about it in his yeah. book. Um, but what I know that we can do is what I'm personally doing is just being an example uh, for others and all the changes that we're making. Um, as a small business, I ran it like a small business. Now I'm looking at it as a big company and I have to think big, mm -hmm. um, which means like having a robust HR program in place that employees feel protected, they feel heard, they feel safe. Um, being able to empower our staff has been like one of the most important things that we've implemented. We, cre we created a program called Brave Conversations, mm -hmm. where we go through a training which teaches our employees how to speak up when there's a conflict, how to resolve a problem before it's a problem. Um, those are powerful because now the employees feel like they have a voice. We also created, um, we installed or in, in incorporated a um, anonymous reporting system mm -hmm. where if employee doesn't feel comfortable with speaking up in the moment, they have an outlet to be able to speak out if there's a problem, depending on, you know, for, for any issue. Yeah. Um, so it's important that like we're, we're we're thinking different. Um, we're creating this zero tolerance um, company. Mm -hmm. And if we come in with that mindset, we're gonna make the changes at a small level that is gonna radiate to a bigger level. It really does. It starts at a small level. Thank you so much uh, for sharing this with us, for, for opening up and talking about everything. Um, we are gonna stick around with you for just a moment because we're gonna head into the kitchen with <laughs> Chef Eduardo Jordan up next. We'll be right back. Well, my friends, welcome back to the show. We are in the kitchen now, back with James Beard award-winning chef Eduardo Jordan. His restaurant, June Baby, in Seattle's Ravenna neighborhood, serves up delicious Southern fare. And what are we making today? We're making a Southern favorite called Etouffee. Ooh. Yeah, fancy name. It literally means to smother. To smother something. Yeah, okay. It, it gets its origins from, like, the French... Très bien. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so how do we make, you know, we're making what kind of etouffee? Because there's all this, different yeah. kinds. Yeah. So, I mean, you can go in any route you want to. You can do chicken. You can do seafood. Um, a really common one in Louisiana is crawfish. Yep. Um, so that's where it kind of got its fame. Um, but we, we're in the Pacific Northwest. We got some of the best oysters that's in the world. That's true. So we're going to do an oyster etouffee. All right. So uh, how do we get started? So. I'm going to get a pot here with some oil okay. going. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm going to add a little bit of butter because um, we like butter too. And the French, obviously this comes from the French um, word means to smother. Um, we're going to add in a little bit of butter here. So you we're going to add, add, yeah, we're going to do the Holy Trinity, which, which is for us our mirepoix. Um, it's onions, um, peppers, and celery. 
So we're gonna get that going first. And a French beer pot would be carrots, but carrots you say are in there. peppers. Peppers, yeah, All replaces right. the carrots. So I'm gonna get us a little stir, let this kind of work its magic. So you let the darker vegetables go in first so that they can, before you put in uh, any onion or anything? Yes, uh, so these are gonna cook a little bit um, slower than the onions, and I also add my garlic in here, so I don't want the garlic to burn. Got it, um, okay. So I'm just gonna give it a jump start um, with the peppers. Ah, and okay. And now here comes the onions and garlic. Yum. I like everything's very coarsely chopped. It's not like you have to spend. Yeah, you know, we're not it's making not it perfect. super fancy. <laughs> I'm here for that. Yeah. So this dish um, originally came down to Louisiana from Canada, believe it or not. Doing, really? Doing the great exploration um, of the French from, from Canada. And so there's a region in Louisiana called um, the Acadian area. Uh -huh. um, and it's where the, a lot of the French settled when they came down to Louisiana. Okay. And so that's what we know like Cajun cuisine. And we also hear Creole cu cuisine. And Creole is, you know, more the natives that were there, from Native Americans mm -hmm. to um, some of the indigenous folks that were there to also the African influence that um, was in Louisiana. So there are two different types of cuisines. I'm marrying both of them today because it means to smother, but when we start adding in spices and tomatoes and things of that nature, that's where the Creole influence came into play yeah. um, into a lot of the foods of Louisiana. So. So much intersectionality in this one dish alone, but in that area, no doubt. Absolutely. So I'm gonna add a little bit of flour now. So this is gonna help us build that roux, which okay. means literally like we're making gravy. Yeah, so typically when I've ever made a roux, mm -hmm. I don't do it with other vegetables involved. I just start with the butter and the and the flour. Flour, yeah. Um, you know, this is kind of comfort cooking to a certain degree. And we're not trying to dirty a bunch of pots. We're not trying to make yeah. it super complicated. Yeah, I'm never trying to do um, that. I'm trying to make it easy as possible when I'm at home. Um, yeah, we make it more complicated at the restaurant because there's extra steps to it. Right. Um, so with this roux, uh, basically flour and oil of some sort, um, we're just getting color and we're cooking the flour. And then you can cook it to whatever stage you want to. If you're talking about like a, a gumbo, you're gonna go into that dark roux stage. Yeah. Um, I'm looking for more of like the peanut butter stage with this one. Okay. Um, so I'm just gonna get a little bit of little color little on bit this. Of yeah. The so magic, yeah, go for it. You want to color the, of peanut butter. Correct. Well, okay. that, that's what I would shoot for. Yeah, okay. Um, when, when I'm looking at making a, a gravy of sorts, um, when I'm looking to make gumbo, I'm going for the dark, dark. Yeah. Almost to the toasty, toasty. To stage. the toasty, toasty. <laughs> um, so Southern food, like you said, you've taken Creole influences, Cajun influences. What else do you make at, at June Baby that kind of takes all those together? Yeah, I mean, the, the African influence is definitely key when it comes down to um, Southern food of what I personally know, what I grew up on. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, my, my food at June Baby is definitely influenced from the African diaspora, mm -hmm. um, from the Caribbean islands to West Africa to just like the plantation. Mm -hmm. um, of, of how, you know, Southern food was essentially like the building blocks of American yeah. cuisine. Um, and all of that influence came from, you know, folks from different places. Right. Um, and Southern food is also influenced with so many different, you know, I mean, you talk about French, we're talking yeah. about this etouffee, the Greek influence, um, and other immigrants that played a part and connected with, you know, Africans um, in, in these lands. It, it's so amazing when you realize how much history and love and passion is, is surrounded by food. Absolutely. Um, and I am grateful that you have brought the Pacific Northwest influence with the oysters. How do we start cooking them? Yeah, so I, um, I'm i gonna add the, a little bit of spices first and then okay. we're, gonna, we're gonna get oyster cooking and kinda get this next step. What kind step. of spice is that? This is some Cajun spice. We make this in house. It has um, uh, some chili in it, Ooh. some um, smoked paprika, which is a okay. chili, um, cayenne, um, sorry, I, I repeated peppers because there's a lot of peppers there's in there. A lot there's, of a bit, there's a little bit of heat. Um, Do so, we some stir time. For you? Go for it in a stir. Um, so, we're going to get a little bit more color while you're stirring. Oh, that smell um, is amazing. And so, I have some Shuck Pacific oysters here okay. from Taylor Shellfish, one of the largest shellfish farmers in the country, maybe the world. See, yeah, we, we <laughs> see them all over here. All over. And so, I dredged them in a coarse flour um, called. A coarse flour, okay. It's called, it's called Selmalina. Oh, yeah, uh, okay. Yeah, and so you can do this with like cornmeal. Um, or any other um, dredge that you may have. And basically, I'm just fully coating these um, in this semolina, and I'm just gonna deep fry them. And I'll, I, do, I do this with oysters because I like more texture. Yeah. Oyster, you know, have that very soft mouth feel. Yes. Um, we're getting super close. I, I like was gonna it. say, it's, do I, I need like to it. take no, this off No, don't worry, now? don't stress. Okay, because it's stress. getting peanut butter color. Peanut butter color is coming. So I got the oysters dredged. I'm okay. gonna, we're gonna get the rest of this etouffee started, and we'll focus on 
um, frying some oysters up. Okay. So I'm going tomato product in now. This is just crushed San, to San Marzano tomatoes. You can get out a quick stir. Okay. Awesome. And then I'm going to add some stock. You can use, if you're making a chicken I, was, I asked him earlier, as soon as I walked <laughs> in, I'm what like, is what this? is that stock? <laughs> so this is the, uh, the this oyster, oyster liqueur. Um, add it with some water um, to make a quick stock. I love it. Um, so we're just going to let that cook slowly. How long does this cook up. now that it's all together? How long does it On cook? a slow simmer, maybe like 20 to 30 minutes. Okay. Um, you can kind of focus on other things at that point in time. We already have some rice cooked. I feel like we should uh, turn that We down. can turn it up. We, we're going to slide it to the side and okay. let, it, let it work as magic. Okay. And we're going to fo focus on some oysters now. We only have about a minute okay. left. So if you want to throw those oysters in. Right in. Okay. I am hungry and awesome. I want to try this dish. Yeah, absolutely. It, take, <laughs> it takes literally a minute to cook the oysters. So. That's awesome. You don't want to overcook them. And through the magic of TV, yes, he's we... already created. Ta -da! So why don't I do this? I'm going to plate the rice for us. Absolutely. Yeah, we go. And then you know what you're doing, huh? I know. I got this. I told you I'm here for you. <laughs> I'm on my way around the kitchen a little bit. I love it. Um, this is one of those dishes that can be elevated. It can be just comfort, and it's honestly watching you do that. It was relatively easy to make. It is. It so. is. Southern food is comforting. It's simple. It is elevated, uh, but it's never pretentious. And Should it doesn't I need to be. put that on here? So we're going to smother the oysters. That's why it's oh, called etouffee. I so. thought we were just smothering them in the butter. No, uh, no, no, no. Okay. <laughs> so we got our oysters here all done. I'm just going to season them with a little bit of salt here. Okay. We're going to place them right on top of that rice, and then we're going to smother them. <gasps> Let's go over here. All right. With I'm our, very excited. With our tomato gravy. Okay. Oh, you, you don't get all the oysters. I, I was you, like, you, wait you. a minute. I'm waiting for more. <laughs> all right. Let me use up. And now we can smother our, eight, our oh, oysters. Oh, you can really smell. Oh, this is going to be so good. I cannot uh, wait. A little messy here. <laughs> this is a little messy. It's we, all we, good. We'll finish with some fresh basil right on top. All right, here we go. Can't even wait. Bon appetit. Mmm. Mmm, mmm. Oh my gosh, that's good. <laughs> Uncomforting. Thank you so much. Absolutely. We'll be right back. Thank you.